Good morning, everybody. Rob Holman here with Aaron Borg, Mike Carey behind the camera. We got Russ Elgin as a special guest. We're on Lake Stevens. Russ, you're gonna dial us in here, huh? I hope to do that. Get us into some fish. So yeah. kokanee on Lake Stevens, and what else? Yeah. <laughs> kokanee. <laughs> kokanee it is! <laughs> kokanee with a side of kokanee. Great. That's right, Great. that's right. Keep watching, we're coming back with Kokanee on Lake Stevens. Out early in the morning, gonna go out and cast away. All these waters here for the big boys. And we all come out to play. It's a Northwestern way. Northwest Fishing Reports. Presented by Gray's Harbor Unders. Russ, every time I come out here and fish myself, I'm mediocre at best, so I need you to help me snap that mediocrity in this boat and get some fish in here. So this morning we went, we're gonna use uh, some Gatsu spoons uh, rigged up for kokanee, and the colors we're gonna emphasize today is 50-50 gold, 50-50 blue, pink, possibly orange, possibly green and yellow top. All right, well that sounds good. Let's get in this boat and go. Let's go fishing. Sounds awesome. <laughs> so Russ, where do you want to start us? We're going to be heading, Mike, to the northeast corner of the lake to start with. Northeast corner it is. Let's go. Wow. How fast do you want to be going? How fast are we going? One. One. If I want to go any per yeah, one's a good, uh, probably one or 1 1.2. Somewhere in there for now. So Stevens is a two rod lake. We could run eight rods today if we wanted to. Yeah, you could. <laughs> I've got eight rods. I've got two pull endorsement. <laughs> All right. Um, let's get six out and see how that goes first. Sure, sure. So this is uh, my own concoction, but basically I'm using some food dye to create kind of an orange effect. And then I add some uh, garlic salt in there and some tuna oil. And it works really, really well. Uh, got the there's net. the net on the side there. We got our all-star team back there. Russ Elgin and Mike Carey. Give us the play-by-play, oh, -play, Mike. That's a nice coconut here. Uh, surprisingly. So the proper technique is to grab the rod before the other anglers have a chance to get to it. <laughs> and that's how you do it. Not bad. Nice bright fish. Yeah. Right in that, uh, I would say about 11 inch maybe. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Pretty good guess. 11 yeah, inches on the, right on the 11 spot. inches on the, on the money. So Russ, we've got one of the uh, God's Tooth on here. Uh, it looks like a gold and silver. Mm -hmm. Big old silver ball behind it. Uh, eight millimeter chrome bead. That's what I like okay. to use. All mm -hmm. right. Well, and then we got a nice little Dodger there, arrow flash, I believe. Mm -hmm. We're in business. This is the new Akuma cold water series that came out this year, and I've got a couple of these. This will be my first day trying them. Beautiful reels, and I'm excited to see how they work. I like the, uh, the manual mechanical uh, line counter versus electronic. I just think Less uh, things can go wrong. I'm not gonna have a battery run out on you. How far back we going? Uh, let's go 50 foot on the setback. 50 foot on the setback, and then we're gonna drop it on the downrigger down. 20 feet. 20 feet down. So, springtime on Lake Stevens, generally shallow water fishery, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Uh, uh, there you go. That's totally good. That's <laughs> Fish on. What do you got on there this time? Yeah, I'm not sure which one this one is. <laughs> oh, so another nice out. fish, though. Oh, there it is! Double! Double! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah! They're feisty! Look at them hot! <laughs> Alright. Oh, there's one right... Oh, that, that was you. Okay, it. okay. There you go. That one's got some size to it there, Russ. Oh, yeah. Oh, pink God's tooth. Kind of hard to get eight rods out, isn't it? Yeah. 
We don't know which half, what's what. Yep. Another respectable kokanee. Russ, you're from around here. They plant this regularly then? Yes. I believe uh, they had a recent plant probably three months ago, I believe. And uh, definitely do a good job of stocking it. You get that fish in here. You're just going to need to pull it. Yeah, worry there, yeah. Mike. Yeah. Just a little. That was a nice one. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, the kokanee have the soft mouth, so that was a little bit of tricky business. I like living on the edge, though. Yeah. He's, he's hooked good. He went after this. What do we have here, Russ? Uh, it's a 50-50 uh, gold. God's two spin. Cool. He's a player. Yeah, he, he went after that good. Mm -hmm. No Absolutely. chance of losing him. No, no. <laughs> good hookup. Russ, we did it. We've got eight rods running off the back of the boat and um, two downriggers, two side uh, planer boards, and four flat lines. One of the questions that we get often um, from our members is when you're long lining, flat lining, how far back should Ch you go? Right, good question. Uh, typically we like to run it about 100 feet back and that's just mainly because a lot of these fish can be very boat shy. So it's important to get that line bar far back and you can probably even go 110 feet if you want. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with going even 75 feet depending on the vessel you have as well, so. And with the leaded line, same concept, and I think that's why leaded line can be really effective, especially early in the season. You're back three colors, that's like 90 feet by itself, mm -hmm. and then you've got the top shot, which is another 50 feet of mono, so you're back, you know, this one rod is back 190 feet, so mm -hmm. getting mm -hmm. it away from the boat's not a bad thing. Correct, that's correct. The fish will generally tell you. <laughs> that's right. If we're back 90 feet and we're flat lining, how deep are the lures typically down? Probably around three to five feet. And a lot okay. of it depends on the dodger size. If the dodger's a little bit heavier or not, will affect it a little bit. Right. But that's a general rule. Yep. And another thing we should point out, we've been seeing a lot of fish jumping. And so that's a clue. It is. <laughs> the fish are up on top. So that's where you should be fishing. We do see some fish on the depth, uh, depth finder down 20, 25 feet. So mm -hmm. that's where the downriggers come into play. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Another skillfully landed fish. <laughs> <laughs> That's got a cool pick pattern on it? there. Yeah. It's a little one, but we'll take them. Wow, that hit it right as it went down. I'll hold your fish, Rob. No, go ahead. <laughs> so Russ, the God's Tooth. It's a really good lure. It's a great design. How did you come up with something like that? At the time, one of the things, again, God placed on my heart was to come up with something unique, and that involved the idea of a reversible spoon. Okay. And that entails the design where you have a wider opening on one end and a smaller opening on the other, and it allows the hook to be placed on either end, and it will create two types of action, a faster or slower action. Uh, the other unique thing about it is it's a multi-species or multi-use lure. So today we're using it for kokanee, because it's rigged for kokanee. But it can be also used for trout, for salmon, for steelhead. People have caught bass with it before. Uh, there are a number of uses for it and it works very well ice fishing as well. Well, it works really good and we're, we're happy to, to, put it to the, put it to the test today. It's been doing really well today. That, that line is not oh. very well. There it is, it's right there. Fish on! Andy's off. Oh. oh! Fish off. Oh, Fish down off. Down rigger. Yeah, it was bouncing. No, no bouncing now. Not on. Found the bite. Yeah, there we go. 
little bit of action. All right, well, I deep that down. Another Miyagi fish. Fish on, fish off. In kokanee fishing, it can be very beneficial to vary your speed. If something's not working, maybe after 20 minutes or so, definitely look at slowing down or speeding up. It can, it can make a, a big difference. What's the range? So typically, uh, myself, I like to run at 0.8 miles per hour on up to about 1.5. I have been out earlier this year where the fish wanted at 1.73, so I was really booking along. Going to give it a try with some Max products. All right. Use our double D to get the lure away from the boat. Another fish on. Another fish off. No way. Yeah, he's off. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There he is. There, there he we is. go. Off. I think that last jump might have been it. He got off? I think on that last jump he did. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I think it's uh, 0 for 3. <laughs> it's <not> me. <laughs> yeah, he got it. It's not him. <laughs> hey, look, I, I offered to give this up. He's like, oh no, it's your turn still. We're determined to have you bring one to the boat. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna happen. See, all the red paint that's normally on the hooks has come off of the hooks. And they, in the factory, they store the luck in the paint. Ah. And so I think it's just run out on ah, this one. Run out. Yeah. We might have to swap them out. <laughs> that's another tips and trips with Aaron Borg. <laughs> Look for the red paint. Yeah. I don't think he's there. What? Oh. No, no, no. What do you he's mean? there. He's there. He's gone. Oh, come on. That's how it's done at Lake Miyagi. <laughs> <laughs> Tough fight today. Yeah. Well, oh. We're on that 50 50 ratio, right? Is that yeah. <laughs> we have yeah, now hit that, the right? exactly the 50 50 ratio. Double! Double! <laughs> oh, look at them go aerial, Mike. <laughs> Heck yeah, they're trying to shake off there. Woo! They're fun little fish. They are fun. I like them smoked. You like to smoke them? I like to smoke them. Do you smoke you them with... the that guy? Yeah. Do you smoke them with the skin on? I do. I fillet them. That's a nice fish. Good job, Rob. Hey, there's a fish there. Oh, double there you go. There you go. Oh, Aaron. Nope. Rob, grab that one. <laughs> wow. Now it's getting hot. Dude, three fish just like that. And I have to hoist. Yeah, here we go. These are all the surface rods as well, and those are some nice looking coats. <laughs> One of the important things about kokanee fishing is being patient and we've just encountered some nice bites and sometimes you just have to grind it out but the bites turned on all of a sudden so we're into fish. Fish on! Ooh, nice head shake. Yeah. Well, Kokanee's about being patient. And uh, had a nice hit, had him on for a bit, but lost her in the end. Typically, when Kokanee fishing, it's normal to expect about a 50% success rate, uh, fish to the box to fish lost. But if you can get better at that, that's great. <laughs> hey everyone, we've come to the end of our show, and Russ, I'd like to thank you for taking us out here on your home waters in Lake Stevens. If people want to learn more about your lures, do you have a website? I do, Mike. It's elginfishing.com. And on the website, you'll find a description of our products, where to buy, and how to use them. I would keep up with this one. I really shouldn't place that one because that's, that's the Oh, that's a nice one. 
Look at that. How do you bonk those again? <laughs> That's how you do it on Lake uh, Stevens. Oh! Ooh, nice cat! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a kiss. Alright, well thanks again and we'll see you guys on the water and online. Take care. Everybody, welcome to the Ponderay River in North Idaho. The Ponderay River runs out of Lake Ponderay and is in Idaho's panhandle. In March of 2019, the state of Idaho announced a walleye bounty. So Shelby Ross and I got talking and figured we'd get up here and see if we can't figure this out. Who better to have on the boat than the guys from Max Lore, Bob Loomis and Bob Schmidt. And we've got Steve Morris of SJM Guide Service from the area on board as well. We're gonna catch a little bit of everything, perch, bass, and hopefully some of these great walleye. He's a little smallmouth bass. Nice fish. Fighting through the perch, trying to find some walleye, and uh, it's this big multi-species uh, day on the Pond Array. And that was on that sonic bait fish? Yeah. yeah. I just thrown it in and it just dropped. And it dropped right in the mouth. He's in it. Go around it. I'm going to shorten the handle. There's a pig. Yeah, it is. That's a nice <laughs> fish. Look at that. <laughs> There's a toad of a largemouth. Yeah. The sonic bait fish. Yeah. So the gulp minnow and a uh, little tiny smile blade there. Swimming over the top of the weeds. Weigh that fish, getting back in the water. 5.44. Nice Molly. I had some had some local help. Uh, bass fishing buddy showed me all of the areas that he's caught the walleye well bass fishing, and uh, that's that's the areas we concentrated on. And it's uh, you got a fish on your rod. If you didn't have local help, how would you how would you start out, Shelby? Looking for weeds. Walleye like the weeds. Generally, the bait fish are in the weeds, so the walleye are right behind them and uh, based on the number of perch we've already caught that's uh, true here as well as everywhere else so we've got a different setup on every rod and we're running one two three four seven rods and none of the two are the same and uh, if we find a pattern that uh, works then uh, we'll uh, shift towards it Bobby do you got some favorites you like to start with well, like Shelby said, we're, you know, we're fishing new water. The first thing we're going to do is go find a weed area because that's where those fish are going to be. Well, when you're fishing a weed area, one of their main, their main reasons that they're up in the weeds is because the perch are there. So is what we're going to do is, oh, is what we're going to do is try to, I'm, I'm mimicking a small perch pattern is what I'm doing. It's trying to make something look like the forage base that they're feeding on. So. That, that's that's my number one go-to, you know, right off the bat when we're fishing something like this. Fish on! Got it. Nice large mouth. Got, got two for one there. <laughs> I got two, two for got one. Two. <laughs> wow, that's a double! <laughs> nice work, Steve. Perfect. Just another species on the Pondre River, North Idaho. Look at that mouth. <laughs> but I will say he picked it up like a little eye. 
fighting like a little bit. Been that one a while. Can't see him. It's an old one. I've seen this old one. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Nice fish. One nice one inch. Fish. What do you got on there, Bob? Yeah, and got a nice walleye. We've we've got all sorts of stuff going on in here now. Rob's got one too. We'll be right back. Hey, grab, that, grab that, grab that, grab <laughs> that. That's a walleye. Look at the beautiful colors on that, huh? That might be the fifth different type of uh, fish we've caught today. Oh, definitely. We've caught a wide variety. Walleye, largemouth, smallmouth, perch, and this. <laughs> State of Idaho tagged 50 walleye here in the Ponderay system with microchips, and if you catch a tagged walleye, you can earn $1,000. And that's what kind of got us uh, interested in uh, exploring this fishery. It's uh, definitely not easy fishing, as we've uh, found out here today. We've uh, had a real tough time keeping the perch off. Uh, lots of different species of fish, largemouth, smallmouth, perch, pumpkin seed, and smalleye. So, interesting fishery. I think a guy could spend 10 years here learning it. Had a couple days, we found a few fish. Fun trip, but uh, just a massive body of water to uh, try and cover, so what else? Uh, if a guy wants to book a trip for pumpkin seed, how do they get a hold of you? 